How much warning did Israel have of a possible attack from Iran? Well, two congressional officials tell NBC News that members of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, they received classified information last week on Iran's plans to strike Israel. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado. He is a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Intelligence Committees. Good to have you with us this morning, Congressman. Uh, just, if you could, just uh, give us a sense of how uh, the members that you've spoken to, um, what you're hearing about what happened last night, where the administration is currently positioned um, in basically telling Netanyahu, take the win. Um, okay, no more escalation here. Uh, how are you seeing this, and particularly how does this now uh, level up the conversation on funding, uh, not just for Israel, but Ukraine? Yeah, well, uh, certainly, you know, we have pretty good visibility into what Iran is doing. Uh, so I wouldn't say that this was necessarily a surprise. And, and they were forecasting some of this, too, right? Mm -hmm. I think that this goes into their risk calculation. Uh, and, and there's a really big question in my mind as to whether or not they wanted this forecasted because they wanted uh, some of these missiles right. to be intercepted yeah. you know, right. as, a, as a way to uh, assess their risk and mitigate their risk. So right now, uh, you know, I haven't received a classified briefing yet since this, this has happened. So when we uh, go back into session on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Intelligence Committee will receive those briefings. And there's a lot of questions in a lot of our mind. I think one of the biggest questions that we're all asking ourselves ha is, has Iran's risk calculation vis-a-vis -vis Israel in regional conflict changed, right? Because right? they're very good at using proxies. That's what they do. Uh, they, they are very good at, at going right up to the line, but avoiding a broader Middle East conflict. This was a direct attack. This by is Iran. different. This right. is a direct attack. It's quantitatively and qualitatively different. The, the number of missiles mm -hmm. uh, is something we haven't seen before, the drones, uh, and the fact that it came directly from Iran. So the question a lot of us are asking is, uh, are they now looking for a broader Middle East conflict, whereas they weren't before? Mm -hmm. Well, to, to that question, I think there are a lot of um, Americans today waking up, Representative Crow, who they may have interest in the region, they may have family in the region, they may be in invested for the reason. And there are others who are just asking, am I as an American less safe than I was 15, 16 hours ago? What, what do you say to them? Well, I would say no. Uh, number one, uh, the United States is standing by Israel. Uh, we surged resources into the region uh, days ago, actually over a week ago. Uh, President Biden, the National Security Council, Defense Secretary Austin, uh, they are tremendous national security leaders, very experienced in, in, in these issues. They are doing exactly the right things and responding to this, uh, putting defensive measures into place. Uh, the risk has been very high for months now, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that this attack has happened uh, doesn't mean that there hasn't been substantial risk. And many of us who have been paying attention to this know that the risk is, is higher, certainly in my lifetime, of a broader Middle East war than um, it's been in, in a very, very long time. So this is a delicate situation, and this underscores the importance of having great leadership in the White House, great leadership uh, in the CIA and the Defense Department and the, in the, the State Department, which we certainly do right now. Uh, Congressman, Last week, when you all left town, uh, this week's legislative calendar included things like refrigerators and um, just very important legislation, I guess, as it relates to appliances for the American people. We now know from Congressman Steve Scalise that that is shifting, and the uh, conversation about aid to Israel specifically is on the table for next week. I, I want to play for you what John Kirby had to say about Congress and aid this morning on Meet the Press, just a little bit ago. You and I both know the votes are there, uh, but the, we're just looking for leadership out of the speaker's office. We're looking for leadership out of the speaker's office. Um, we had <clears throat> Congressman Meeks on earlier this morning who noted the only aid package, there's one bill that he would support, and that is the bill that was passed in the Senate in February that had aid to Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and humanitarian aid for Gaza. Uh, is that the only aid package you too would support uh, when it comes to the aid that is much now needed for our ally Israel, but also Ukraine. Well, I want to go to your original point about, you know, the, the original legislative agenda for this week, which was the best of the best for House Republicans' woke culture war uh, agenda, right? They, they continue to focus on things uh, to, to, you know, to try to roll back important life and safety regulations on appliances. Uh, th this is stuff that, uh, um, you know, is absurd. Uh, they try to make a, a big deal about, about these uh, issues that, uh, you know, are not on front of mind of Americans. Yes, well, 
stoves. Gas stoves, you know, refrigerator safety regulations, rolling this stuff back. Meanwhile, uh, we have substantial national security issues facing the country, from Ukraine to Taiwan to Israel. Uh, that's what we continue to be focused on. The Senate passed, overwhelmingly passed, a bipartisan national security bill. Uh, we can take that up tomorrow. We could pass it tomorrow, overwhelmingly. They still refuse to do that. Uh, that is what this is about. Right. Uh, uh, we need to move a bill. We need to move it now. Uh, these conflicts are all tied to one another. We, we see Iran, uh, North Korea, China, Russia. They are all coordinating. They are now working together. We need a comprehensive national security bill. We have one in the Senate bill. Let's get it done. Thomas, I, I think that's the frustration for a lot of folks that, uh, you know, you have these these great events that are all converging together. You know, you've got the ongoing narrative uh, between Russia, Ukraine, you've got Israel and, and Palestine, now you've got Israel, Iran, and you've got a Congress and, and that is sitting there, uh, as Simone rightly noted, worried about gas stoves and appliances. Um, how do Democrats at this point uh, level up the conversation and leverage against those storylines and take use the rules of the House um, use uh, the rules that are available to push to push back on this level of of inability to move on these big issues because you you have particularly with the Ukrainians and the Palestinian people two communities that are suffering desperately mm -hmm. uh, and 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 not so much for different reasons I mean you know famine and and war exact the same cruelty and and so the reality that the Congress has right now to step in and do something is there anything Democrat leaders Democratic leaders in the house can you do using the rules you, against this this sort of slow roll by Republicans? Well, there, there's two issues going on here. One is uh, our need to continue to communicate to America, mm -hmm. right, to tell the story. And we have a great story to tell. Last Congress, also with a very narrow majority, Democrats were in control of the House, President Biden in the White, in the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the most legislatively successful Congress in generations. Not since the great society legislations of Lyndon Johnson have we passed more transformative legislation, right. from veterans to national security, to climate crisis, to health care. Uh, we did that with a very narrow majority. And then contrast that with right now, uh, one of the least productive Congresses in American history. So continuing to tell that story, continuing to tell the, the fact that you know the Democratic Party is now the party of national security. We are the ones that, were, were, that helped to negotiate a bipartisan immigration border security bill that we would have taken up until the former president rejected. said, no, don't right. take it up because we want to campaign on this. Right. We're the ones that want to continue to push Ukraine, not because that's a charity bill, but because that's in U.S. national security and economic interests, right? Mm -hmm. This is not charity. This is looking out for the American people. So we have a great story to tell. And there are some legislative procedures that are available to us, right? Because there are some moderate Republicans that understand this, understand this well. And that's well. where I was going to, yes. Right? And, and a lot yeah. of those, by the way, are my fellow veterans, right? right? Uh, I'm right. very close with my fellow combat veterans in the House. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those folks say, listen, this is a, a generational moment. This is a, a Churchill moment where we have to step up and do big things. Uh, and, and, you know, we're talking to those folks about uh, how we move this forward if we need to. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.